What's up ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, this is Pet Rock Media aka Photo Joe coming at you with another daily vlog. Um, as you can tell, this is something a little bit different. I'm actually in my car right now, I'm in my truck, headed home after a long day at work and I just wanted to kind of converse with you and kind of give you my overall impressions of little bits of information that I came through in and about the day. Uh, first off, big, big, big news if you're an Apple iPhone user, as many of you know I am. This is my Moshi case on my iPhone 6 Plus. And today, today is the day that they released iOS 9. Now, a little bit later in the afternoon, since I am in Central Standard Time, it was released at noon, and I immediately started the update. I was a little worried because I only had 1.2, I believe, free gigs of space on my phone. Yes, I know, I got a 16 gigabyte iPhone. That's never gonna happen from this point forward. My new 6S Plus that I'm getting in the mail is actually the 128 gigabyte version. So from this point forward, I will hopefully not be lacking storage as I have with this phone. And phones pass, and ever since the original 3, uh, 3G that I got, which was the first iPhone that I received, uh, even the eight gigs at that time were fine for me. I never really was a massive uh, picture taker with it. Um, I was still used to utilizing either my DSLR or a point and shoot camera. So iPhoneography didn't really catch on for me as fast as some people did. And then of course the camera has been getting steadily better and better and better. And now with a camera coming out that shoots 4K video and it's a 12 megapixel increase, uh, higher panels, yada, yada, yada. Y'all seen the, um, the presentation and the keynote. So with that, I knew the next phone I had to get at least the 64, if not the 128, but I decided to pull the trigger and get the 128 model uh, through AT&T. That should hopefully be coming in next week and I'll be doing a review at kind of like first impressions, maybe an unboxing, I'm not 100% sure, uh, but I'll be doing a first impressions review at least after the first couple of days, hopefully that by the end of that weekend, maybe Sunday afternoon, I'll film a little just quick video as to how I feel uh, about my initial impressions of the iPhone 6 Plus. Sorry if I'm not paying right attention, but again, I am in my truck, I'm driving right now, and I do want to maintain, you know, making sure I'm looking everywhere that I need to look so I don't call it an accident. So back to iOS 9, um, install it on the iPhone. I had enough space. I know iPhone uh, or Apple has now done this thing where they will delete apps off of your phone temporarily. So that way they can have enough space to install the update and it'll save all your information so that way when they reinstall the app, it, it, it's as if nothing ever happened. I'm not sure how that worked with my phone since again, I said I only had about 1.2 gigs worth of space. And since this phone is going to become my wife's phone when I get the iPhone 6S Plus, I deleted a few of my games because I figured in the next week I'm not gonna be gaming as much on that phone. Um, so I decided to delete it and it did free up that edition because at first I only had about 800 megabytes worth of space. So that right there should tell you that why haven't I upgraded to a higher gigabyte phone? I know, I know, but hopefully from this point forward that will never happen again. So, some of my thoughts on the new features um, that I've had a little bit of time to play with since again, as I said, I just got off of work. Uh, the very first one that I'm pretty sure I'm gonna take a lot of advantage of and that is the new Notes app. I'm a huge note taker. Uh, now that I'm back in school receiving my second master's degree, um, I always have my phone with me and I had been using Notes and Evernote, uh, well, primarily Evernote, uh, with notes occasionally, something for real quick when I can tell Siri, Siri take a note of this, this, and this. But for Evernote, I usually utilize that when I'm taking heavy notes for my classes since my classes are all online. Uh, but this new Notes app has some potential. Obviously, it's not gonna kill Evernote since Evernote has been knocking this out of the park for years. And I don't see myself switching over to, Ev to the Notes uh, native app fully, but it does have some few, uh, few improvements that I do see me benefiting from. Uh, the checklist, automatic checklist, looks like that's gonna be something I'm gonna utilize. Um, the drawing, the hand drawings, taking quick notes that way. I'm in the process of buying the pencil from paper uh, to utilize with their new paper app that they came out with on the iPhone. And that's something that I think is gonna help me, especially taking qu quick notes, not only for my school, but for work and so forth. So. I see that being beneficial. Um, so notes automatically 
is something that I'll that I'm going to be utilizing a little bit more than I do now. Uh, just a key note though, when you do launch the Notes app for the first time, it's going to ask you to upgrade it, and it will tell you and it will list all your devices that you have on there or that are needing to be updated to El Capitan which will not be released until September 30th. So there's going to be a few moments or a few days where you're not gonna have access to your newly updated notes app and your new notes until you do upgrade your actual uh, MacBooks, MacBook Airs, MacBook Pros, iMacs, and so forth with El Capitan when that does come out here in a few weeks. So that's a note that you might wanna uh, you know, write down and keep in mind when you are looking to upgrade. I went ahead and did it. Um, I rarely utilize notes on my MacBooks and stuff. It's mainly with my iPads and my iPhone, which my iPad was updated, also my iPad mini. And once I make it home, I'm gonna do my iPad Air. So that should be no problem for me. Um, let's see multitasking or kind of when you double click the home button on the iPhone the new way you can go through apps is what it reminds me of is if you're if you're a Windows user and you're used to the term cascading windows and it kind of I believe started in Windows 7 where it kind of shows all the windows kind of lined up and you can kind of scroll through them or kind of it looks almost like cover art uh, if you're used to uh, iTunes and you know how you can use cover art to kind of flow through it your cover flow that's kind of now how the apps look and you still can kill the app by swiping up uh, so that's you know nice cosmetics the maps I looked at the maps quite a bit um, and did a little research online some of the map improvements are hopefully going to now make it uh, not so much beat Google Maps I'm a huge Google Maps user um, I love the way it incorporates in my vehicle. So, and now with the addition of off offline maps from Google Maps, I'm not sure what the Apple native map app will do for me, but improvements nonetheless, and they will. Um, sorry, got a sun's kind of in the way here. Um, it will help out for those of you who do utilize and prefer the Maps app uh, that's native on the iPhone. Uh, let's see what else um, multi gesture I'm gonna try I tried it out very momentarily with my iPad mini I have an iPad mini 3 uh, works pretty cool it doesn't allow the, the split screen because if I'm not mistaken that's for iPad Air 2 and above uh, which at this point is gonna be just the iPad Air 2 and then the iPad Pro uh, when that is released in November so at this point if you want to utilize the split screen which cuts it right in half um, that's unfortunately only available for the iPad Air 2. Uh, but on the iPad mini, it kind of gives you a slide or a little slither on the side, on the right-hand side, to utilize some of the native apps like uh, News, which we'll get into that, uh, the new native News app, which is Apple's response to kind of like Flipboard and Zeit and things like that. Um, so it's about maybe an inch, inch and a half of space where you can kind of utilize that. So that's something to utilize for like reminders, um, making quick notes, talking about the notes app. So it is something that's beneficial and it is a multitasking gesture that Apple has finally implemented. Um, not sure how much I'll utilize that. Um, I might be looking into possibly upgrading to an iPad Air 2. I've been hearing rumors that they might have an iPad Air 3 on the way, so we'll see. Um, only time will tell. That's something that I'm not really too much, too much going to be utilizing I have a Microsoft Surface Pro 3 and I do utilize it occasionally on there especially when I'm typing out reports and I'm referencing notes that split view is awesome but it's not something that I utilize on a daily basis um, the little pop out for the video uh, if you want if you're watching a video and I believe this is only now of course as the uh, as the OS is implemented and developers uh, start re uh, releasing apps for this Currently, if I'm not mistaken, and quote, and I could be completely wrong, currently the small picture-in-picture -picture only works with the native videos app on your iPad Air 2. Uh, but from what I can tell, since I don't own an iPad Air 2, this is just what I've seen, it does work pretty well. Um, it kind of shrinks the video down to about an inch and a half or two inch uh, little screen that has the video that can be moved around the entire surface of the iPad. That seems pretty cool, but... I'm not a massive multi, uh, like multi-screen kind of like multitasking individual. Um, 
you know you could call it multitasking if you want but essentially you're only focusing on one thing at a time it's physically almost physically impossible I'm not gonna say 100% but almost physically impossible to focus on two things at once which is why I can't focus right here and keep an eye out on the road I can use peripherals but that's still not 100% focus so I'm not a big multitasker per se but I could see how this kind of minimizing it to just have the video and kind of glance at it a little bit. I could see how it's something utilized uh, by some individuals. Um, I could see how that's going to be, that's going to look pretty awesome on an iPad Pro given the massive screen size, but I'm not 100% sold on the iPad Pro. I kind of, I'm going to have to feel it, play with it, see a model at the Apple Store, or Best Buy, or wherever, and kind of make the decision there. The price is extremely high, in my opinion, for a device that I don't really see myself really using a whole lot. Um, the iPad Mini is pretty much my go to uh, device, and my iPad Air I do utilize from time to time, but I mean, my go to is usually the iPad Mini. Um, so we'll see where that goes. Uh, the no the news, I'm sorry, not the notes, but the news app, the new native news app, which is Apple's kind of competing or competitor with uh, Zite and Flipboard and all of those uh, news apps. It's pretty nice. I mean, it has some already blogs and uh, news sites and whatnot that have already kind of uh, been inputted in there into the app. It's pretty smooth. I do like the way it looks um, Let's see if I can give you just a really 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 quick view of the news I mean, it's pretty It does look pretty nice Can't really see with the glare. Let me see if I can increase the brightness a little bit So you can kind of see that it does and what's good about this is it's almost essentially like the add to reading list uh, that Safari has that it takes away. Or if you used to like uh, Instapaper, Pocket, things like that where it just removes all of the clutter and just allows you to focus on the content of whatever it is that you're reading. Um, something similar to that except this is your news. You don't really have, if I'm, I'm not mistaken, you don't really have the ability to add specific articles that you want to read later that's what the reading list is for and whatnot but this allows you to select right when you launch the app it's going to ask you to select from different publications so like wired uh, mashable cult of mac things like that and it's going to ask you also what kind of areas interest you so like computer science i put on there i put sociology because that's you know something that i'm interested in um gadgets gear tech whatnot it allows you to pick quite a few things and then once you do that and you hit okay or get started then it's going to automatically give you some uh articles that you can utilize to read through the day, you know, to kind of catch up on your news based on your interests, your likes that you selected. So I do see myself kind of using that. Um, Zite, for those of you who don't know, Zite is a, is a great app on the iPhone. Uh, for me personally, I love utilizing that app always. So it might be something that I utilize as well because sometimes certain apps like this will not pick up on certain stories. If they're major, major stories, then it's usually all over all those apps. But, you know, you never know. Some apps uh, might pull certain stories that the other app may not. So that might be something that I'm going to look into and possibly uh, get, but, I mean, or utilize daily. But, again, it's a nice little feature. I'm not, it's not, you know, world life-changing, but it is cool to have another app on there uh, like that. And then the last one that I want to kind of touch base with you is the addition of the iCloud Drive app. Um, before you wouldn't, you couldn't be able to access those files necessarily through your iPhone. Um, you could on your periphery, on your actual laptop devices or your uh, desktops. But now you actually have the drive available for you to view the files. What I did hear, and I haven't played with it 100%, but what I did read up and kind of uh, took away from just briefly looking at it is I do not believe you can actually upload to the drive, kind of like Dropbox, where you can actually save documents to that. Um, you can essentially only view those documents right now, edit them, and if I'm not mistaken, you can it'll upload it right back to it. But that's only if you in, if you click on a file that's already natively in there. So let's say you get like for instance right now with Dropbox, if I get an attachment in an email and I open it, I can then open in Dropbox and then save that file to you know a folder in Dropbox, Dropbox or make a folder and add that file there. 
on iCloud Drive, I wasn't able to kind of find that. So it may be a feature that I just don't know how to get to, or it may be a feature that Apple just decided to leave out and maybe with, you know, updates later. I'm not 100% sure. All I know is that that is something that I saw uh, initially, and that could be a problem for some, maybe not for others. I'm still gonna utilize Dropbox most likely because I, I mean, iCloud Drive has been out for, I'm not sure, maybe a year or so, I could be wrong, and I have not used it as extensively as I have Dropbox. I mean, even on my Surface Pro 3, it has the OneDrive. I rarely use that thing. I mainly use Dropbox. So that's my thoughts on the uh, iCloud Drive. Um, go ahead and leave some comments down below and I'll try to answer them as fast as I could. Let me know if this is something, this video is something that you guys wanna see from me. Um, since I do now, I'm shooting on the Canon G7X. I have kind of a little mount that was initially used for my iPhone, uh, but I can easily swap out the camera the way I have it set up. Um, and just let me know if this is something that you're interested in kind of me doing um, on a daily basis or every other day. Um, I My drive home is roughly about 25, 30 minutes and I'm already 15 minutes into this video. So it's a great time for me to kind of just unload my thoughts and whatnot for the day. So let me know, give me a thumbs up, even give me a thumbs down. You know, I you can't have love without hate. So go ahead and give me a thumbs up, thumbs down, leave those comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe. Again, this is Pet Rock Media, AKA Photo Joe, coming at you and I will see you in the next one. Peace.